Hey guys, Rivers here with Tech Connect, and I hope you're having an awesome day. Today I want to show you my favorite camera that I've ever owned. Let me give you a little bit of background first. Uh, I've always used to carry a high quality still camera and then a separate camcorder with me because the video never was quite perfect on even the highest end cameras like a DSLR. They would be limited to like say 1080p video at 30 frames a second. And I, so I'd get a camcorder that could do 60 frames a second and then came 4K and the DSLRs were a little bit behind on that. So anyways, I've been testing this camera for a few months now and it's now my main camera. I don't use the video camera nearly as much as I used to. And that camera is the Sony A6300. It shoots really, really nice still frames and the video is amazing, the best I've ever seen. We'll go ahead and take a look at this closer in a minute and also show you some video footage that I've shot. First of all, this camera shoots really nice still pictures, and it's got a lot of great features for shooting stills. But to me, video is probably a little bit more important, and that's where this guy really shines. It's as good as a camcorder in most situations, better in some, like low light. And uh, the only thing it's lacking maybe is a little bit of stabilization, but it does have electronic stabilization, which is pretty good. I mean, you don't notice it's on there at all, and it gets rid of a little bit of the vibration. So the number one thing I like about this camera is the video quality. It looks so good. Imagine a still shot from a camera and then that shot moving and that's what it looks like on here. And the way Sony does this is they actually shoot the video internally at 6K and then inside the camera it's downsampled to 4K. 6K is 18 megapixels and then 4K is 8. So it's actually getting a lot more information and then getting rid of all the like static and graininess. It looks awesome on there. Now my next favorite thing on this camera is the lens, and that's a 16 to 70 millimeter lens. I had it on my A6000 also, and it's just been such a good lens that I carried it over onto here. And that's equal to about a 24 to 105 on a full frame camera. So it's kind of that sweet spot where you're gonna use it all around. It's just a super versatile lens, and the quality is amazing on it. If you look at all the reviews online, they all, they rate a bunch of different lenses and they always say this is the one lens, if you're going to get any lens, get this lens. And actually I got a really good deal on it because I got this thing called the white box and it's basically when they're going to sell a lens as part of a kit with a camera but they sell it instead by itself. And so it saves you a couple hundred bucks on there. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. Another feature I like on this camera is it can shoot slow motion in full 1080p at 120 frames a second. And that looks really good when you slow it down in uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Another thing that's pretty cool is it's got a silent shutter mode, so you can just leave the shutter open and it'll take shots and it's nice and quiet. So if you're out in nature, you don't want to make a noise, or you're in a crowded room that's quiet, you don't want it to make noise, you can turn that off. That's a nice option to have. Okay, here's another cool feature of this camera, and that is that it's got apps now. At least it's a step in the right direction. They're not perfect, but they're pretty cool. So you've got like an app for time lapse, you've got an app for remote control. You've got an app called Sky HD, which gives you that HDR photo effect that looks really cool. You've got tilt shift options. Anyways, these are all apps. Some of them you need to pay for, but I think it's actually really cool because it's like, say for the time lapse app, it's $10. But if you're going to buy a remote, it's like, you know, $70 to $100, and you have to carry an extra little piece of hardware with you. So I think that's a pretty good way to go. Now, the apps aren't perfect. They're, I'd say it's a bit laggy but they do get the job done and I think it's a, a step in the right direction. So I really like to see the apps continue to grow on here. Another cool thing about this camera is it's got more color options, actually quite a few different color options. And my camcorder was always missing the option to change anything in the color. So it always looked kind of neutral, maybe not real punchy. And this one I can just kick it up the saturation just a little bit higher and that makes it just perfect for me. I used to have the Sony A6000, and this is a nice improvement over that camera. For one thing, it gives you a microphone input jack, which is sorely needed on here. It also has much better battery life. I'd say it's about twice as good. And you can actually power the camera while you're using it with one of these external batteries like this guy right here, so that you're saying you're doing something long, like a long video or maybe a long time lapse. You can just clip this underneath your tripod and have power for days with that thing. The only thing that I wish this camera did differently was the LCD screen. You can tilt it and look down at the camera, or you can tilt it this way and look up at the camera, which are both really nice to have, but I really wish the camera would flip out and be front facing so you can see it from the front of the camera. Because someone who does a lot of YouTube videos, that's really nice to have. So if it had the tilting screen that you can see from the front, I'd say this camera would be a perfect 10. Since it does, then I'd give it a 9. Now there is a workaround that you can do to uh, make the camera have a front facing screen, sort of, and it actually works pretty good. So what I did as a workaround is I got this 
phone mount from a company called iJellyfish. And this is really nice because it's spring-loaded, so it can take just about any different size phone. And actually, you can rotate it, too. So you can put the phone different ways if you want. And I got an adapter that goes into the bottom of that to connect it to the hot shoe on the camera. I was also able to connect a small, lightweight OLED screen tablet to the camera. I used the uh, remote control app on the camera and the Sony Play Memories app on the tablet. And then I could see whatever the camera saw on the bigger screen of the tablet. This was nice because I could then review the pictures on the bigger, brighter screen and make sure they looked the way I wanted them to. You can control a lot of the main functions of the camera on the screen of the tablet, but not everything. It lets you do just mainly the basic stuff. Also, one of the most important things to make this a camcorder replacement is put the focus mode into continuous autofocus. That way, whenever it changes focus, it's a smooth motion and you don't notice it, and it tracks really well to whatever's moving around in the screen. One other accessory that I highly recommend for this camera and a lot of different DSLRs is a polarized lens filter. So this one's an adjustable lens filter, so you can rotate it and adjust how you want the polarization to look. And what this does is it gets rid of a lot of reflections on things like water, uh, windows, shiny surfaces, and it also makes like, say, the sky will get that really deep shade of blue that you see in postcards. And it'll do the same thing for you in video as well. So highly recommend one of these. It works great, well worth the, around $100, but depending on the size of the lens, well worth the money. So a good way to test the versatility of a camera is to test video on it at night. Because you can't use tricks like you can with photo mode where you do long shutter speeds and things like that to get a good quality video. And I went ahead and ran this at night, and it smoked everything that I've ever used before as far as the video quality. It just looked just like it did with your naked eye, or maybe even a little bit better sometimes. And that was in video, so I couldn't do you know, any, uh, any photo things like a flash or long shutter speed to make it look better. So I'll put that video up next. You can take a look, what you, see what you think. So I also went and shot some video in Yosemite National Park and some other places, and I'll put that video up there too, and you can see what you think. All right, guys, I'll have a link to the camera, the lens, all the hardware in the video description down below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks, and as always, aloha.